What's going on with the altcoin market? Is it still going down? Is it going to go up soon? Those of you holding altcoins are probably going to be frustrated with just how much downside there's been and it starting to feel hopeless. And I can understand that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to address tonight. This is crypto simulation theory. I'm the Gaussian snake. Nothing in here is to be considered financial advice. If you like the content, please like, subscribe, and comment. Join my Telegram group for more information, such as daily uh, chart alerts, updates, and things like that, and a community of almost 300 other interested investors like yourself. So let's go ahead and pull up a chart. This is going to be my focus tonight. Others dominance, but before we actually do that, let me show you the altcoin season index so right now it is very much not altcoin season it is bitcoin season and you can see by looking at the chart here that we have been spending quite a bit of time in bitcoin season kind of on and off since june we had a little fake out that happened very briefly in july but ultimately it was just a um, lower high so um but honestly this does seem to be coming into some kind of consolidation phase and um, this actually is starting to look a little bit bullish for altcoins. So um, just even looking here, you can see kind of a, a nice bottoming formation that's been taking place now for about two months. And that to me is actually a really good sign. You can see just how um, horrible things look for altcoins. Um, Cas, Aave, um, XMR, Monero, uh, Tron, XRP, Toncoin. I don't know what WBT is. Somebody can tell me in the uh, comments. I don't really care. Um, yeah, they're, they're doing pretty well. And, you know, very few things are actually outperforming Bitcoin right now. It's kind of sad to see this. But this is, this is also a sign that things may be reversing soon because these kind of metrics don't, like, stay stable like this for very long. It can seem like things are never going to get better and always going to go down. But that is just simply not the case. So... Let me change my view here so you can see more of the screen. All right. So this is others dominance on the two week. And I want to start by looking at it on the two week and point something out that I noticed. Um, you know, besides maybe comparing things to the past, which I'm not a huge fan of doing. I mean, we can see that we've had these flush outs of altcoins every single cycle. You know, we had one here in December 2016. We had one here in um, at the end of 2020. And we have, well, it seems like we're having another one here sort of at the end of the summer of 2024. Now, I don't know if we can extrapolate that the same pattern is occurring over and over again if we were to like break this up into three distinct fractals, kind of like the first fractal ending in February 2017, the second fractal ending or beginning, you know, in, in uh, early 2017, ending in uh, January 2021. Perhaps we're looking at another fractal playing out similar to how these other ones have played out with a little bit less volatility, of course. So. Others dominance is having its first green candle of the uh, of the several past several like months. Actually, it's been just brutal downtrend. Um, it is a bit of an indecisive candle, almost look like a gravestone doji, but um, you can see there's a little bit of a lower boundary here. So we are finding some support in the 9% region, which is good news. Now, when I am potentially seeing form here, and I can't say this for certain yet, but just to kind of lead things off a little bit of bullishness, this looks like a shoulder to me. This looks like a potential head. Now the question is, are we gonna print another shoulder here? Now you might say, well, isn't a head and shoulders bad? No, this is an inverse head and shoulders, an upside down head and shoulders. Should it form, should we get a shoulder here? This is a typically quite a bullish formation. Now we don't know if that's going to happen and just because you form it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to do anything. Um, but that's a little bit of structural TA for you to kind of build a little basis for why I'm starting to get bullish on altcoins against Bitcoin. So notice I'm not saying I'm bullish against altcoins against the U.S. dollar um, because Bit who knows which way Bitcoin is going to go. My base case is Bitcoin will rally in the rate cuts. Can't really say for certain what's going to happen after that. Um, you know, I've done videos on it, so I'm not going to waste time talking about it here. But I, I do think that. Um, it is kind of you know worth considering if you have a lot of altcoins right now if you're heavily invested in them um you're probably not doing very well the satoshi value of your, of your portfolio is probably very depressed so I, I think i have a little bit of hope that i can potentially offer you so one thing that i noticed uh, before i made this video 
is that altcoin dominance or others dominance, this is for, by the way, for those of you who are not familiar, others dominance is for the top, um, it's, it's for the altcoin market minus the top 10. It doesn't include the top 10. So I'm gonna create a little trend line here and try to get as many touch points as I can. And I might have to like change the slope just a little bit. So you can see that this trend line has held up pretty well since 2017. Now all trend lines are eventually going to break, but I don't know if this one's going to break this cycle. You know what is kind of interesting I just noticed? I literally just noticed this now. And this is a little scary. So you remember I showed you the inverse head and shoulders? Um, I literally just noticed this now. This right here looks like a, a giant head. This looks like a giant shoulder. And this looks like a giant shoulder on the two week. Yeah. Let's hope the neckline on that doesn't break. Uh, I don't think that it will. But then again, I really don't know. I'm going to present why I think that all coins are going to be bullish against Bitcoin. So. Uh, I guess here's a counterpoint to it, right? <laughs> just to start off. I just noticed that right now. So I figured I'd at least mention it to you so you could do your own research, which is what this is all about. Anyways, I'm just providing you with a means to do your own research. Let's flip on a Gaussian channel just to get an idea of the volatility um, and behavior that we've experienced with others dominance so far. So we are still underneath a red Gaussian channel. Keep in mind, this is again, the two week time frame, which is a nice time frame. I like looking at it. We have gone below it. Now, what I will note is that, the, is that the Gaussian channel did inflect the concave up. This is a really difficult thing to do on a two-week time frame. And it's quite unlikely to go back down again. In fact, it's more likely to go and flip green in the coming months. Um, there's only one other time the Gaussian has ever been red on others' dominance on the two-week, and that was in um, you know, late 2019 heading into 2020. And so I think we are staring down a somewhat similar situation here where we can see others dominance really start to rally. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods because even when it rallied out of the red Gaussian, it just dropped again. So, you know, it's possible we're going to rally soon, but I need to give you some evidence for that other than just talking through it. But I at least wanted to mention, you know, we're going to look at, we're going to look at the things we usually look at and then we'll get under the hood. So don't worry, you know, um, we'll do our thorough analysis like we usually do. I want to turn on the 50 and 100 HMAs. You know that I like to look at these. Um, I consider them to be quite relevant. You can see that we've had a golden cross of the 50 and 100. And we are potentially facing a death cross. Now, the last time we had a death cross was during the bear market and it spelled doom for all coins. As you can see, it just followed this all the way down. We got a golden cross in December 2023 following this impulse move. So. Uh, like SMAs, HMAs, those, these are whole moving averages, not, not simple moving averages. HMAs are still lagging, um, but they're less lagging than SMAs. Uh, we had a golden cross in April of 2020. And, you know, that did provide sort of a move up for altcoins only to, you know, fall through the floor and uh, Bitcoin's mania run, but then they came right back up. So when you have the 50 above the 100, that's just generally where you have more strength than not. And you say, well, we have the 50 above the 100 now. Yeah, but it's curling down. So we have to kind of see what happens. Maybe we do something like what happened here. And we, uh, you know, because the 50 and 100 don't spend um, a lot of time crossing, right? So we, we should keep that in mind that right now it is bullish until proven otherwise. We, if we should cross, that would not be a good thing. We are still underneath the 200 week HMA and this, or sorry, this, by the way, this was not the 50 week and the 100 week that uh, I forgot we're on a two week time frame. This was the 100 week and the 200 week. This is actually the 400 week. So, you know, let's let's discuss this again. OK, so um, I'll probably have to go to the weekly time frame then. But yeah, so this is this is even harder to have these crosses. So this blue one is the 100 week. These were on a two week time frame. The white one is the 200 week. Um, we are now below all of them. And this is the 400 week. So. Um, yeah, we crashed through here. That's going to cause this one to turn down. But do we get another death cross is the big question. I don't think so. I think that this will remain a golden cross um, and, and stay validated. You know, it, it's going to be hard to get above this 400 week. Obviously, we've had three touch points and failed every single time. So that's you know a little discouraging. All right. Sorry, I got those numbers wrong. Um, Turn on the Gunnar EMA, we have a bearish cross. Um, 
you know, this happened in December 2020, only to flip to a bullish cross in February 2021. I think something like that is likely to play out again, where this flips to a bullish cross fairly soon. And I understand, you know, we're not really understanding where the bullishness is coming from, but I wanted to show you these things first. Keltner channels, um, it's kind of sideways, okay? This is just kind of sideways, um, you know, and uh, you can see kind of we're bouncing here at the lower end of the Keltner channel. Last time we hit the lower Keltner channel, we did have a nice bounce. Um, yeah, so I think though that's probably good enough for these, you know, sort of uh, superficial indicators. Let's take a look under the hood and I'll show you some of the things that made me start to feel kind of bullish on um, others' dominance. So one thing that I noticed is we're at some pretty low levels for others' dominance. Like these are levels that are not hit often. Um, so we're at a level of almost negative 60, and this is on the reverse Chandy momentum oscillator or the price momentum oscillator, as I like to call it, even though that's not the official name for it. You can see that we have had a red signal line um, since March, and this has come down quite nicely. I'm kind of, I was kind of hoping to see something like this for Bitcoin um, to kind of mark the end of its downtrend, but we'll have, we'll have to see what happens there. But for, for all coins against Bitcoin, this is starting to look pretty good. Um, the last time we were down at these levels was in June of uh, July of 2022, and we were there again in December of 2022, um, and now we're there again in August of 2024. So you can see these levels are not hit often, and when they are hit, they tend to provide a pretty hefty bounce. Now you could look back to, um, yeah, and you could look back to September of 2019, really nice bounce. Uh, the, um, the bear market of 2018 heading into 2019 got us actually below this line. And the only other time that happened was from November 2015 to December, 15. it was like a brief moment. So I think you can conclude that there are some pretty, like I love this, this indicator, by the way, there are some fairly high odds of a bounce here of, of a nice bounce even if we don't make it to a green signal line i think we're going to see some relief soon for all coins against bitcoin meaning that um whatever bitcoin does all coins will outperform bitcoin and i think that that is likely to happen now this could roll over a little bit more um that is possible okay we do know bitcoin dominance is still doing okay it's hobbling along beneath 60 percent it's like around 57 58 percent Oh, uh, right here, like 56.89. So it's actually dropping. So, um, you know, if you just ignore narratives and you don't think about rate cuts for a minute and you don't think about recessions, you kind of just take your head out of that, which is hard for me to do sometimes. Um, we can sort of agree here that we're probably at or near a bottom for altcoins against Bitcoin for at least a little while. You know, will it just, will we just bounce straight up into a major altcoin season like we did in late 2020? We could. We could. Uh, the quarter four could end up being an altcoin season. Um, it could happen. OK. Um, and I think it will happen uh, sometime either in quarter four or potentially even um, earlier. Could happen even in September and surprise us all. So just watch out for this. Like I said, we don't get down here very often. That's something to keep in mind. If we go to the weekly time frame on this reverse Chandy momentum oscillator, you can see that we're hobbling around at these low levels. Look how long this signal line has been red. When has the signal line for altcoin dominance been this red? Never. <laughs> yeah, never. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is getting to be pretty low. We are actually holding some support at the signal line. I mean, at this line here, but you can just tell if your altcoins are suffering, you really don't need to wait too much longer. This is probably going to come back up. Um, like I said, probably quarter four. At the latest, I mean, I can't, what is this red line going to do? Just keep going down? That doesn't, that, that's not how this works. This looks almost like a reverse 20, you know what? This one looks like a 2018 bear market, like for Bitcoin. Here's the 2017 parabolic blow off top, and here's it. So you can tell double bottom here, all coins are going to be strong soon, okay? Against Bitcoin. Again, I don't know what's going to happen against the US dollar, but as long as you're outperforming Bitcoin and ideally Ethereum, um, which is another story. But even here, you know, like it, it's good to see others' dominance going up, even if Ethereum dominance is going up with it. Um, we just want our altcoins ideally to outperform both Bitcoin and Ethereum, but let's just start with Bitcoin. Okay, so on the weekly, the reverse Chandy looks really good. 
Another indicator I wanted to look at, um, uh, I guess I'll look at on the weekly is um, wave trend. So the wave trend. Okay, so this is not loading. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Let me pause the video for a second and figure this out. All right, so um, this is the weekly wave trend analysis. And you can see that we had a inverse head and shoulders with the um, left shoulder inverted in June of 2022. We had the um, head in December of 2022 and the right shoulder, again, inverted right shoulder, June of 2023. And then that led to a head and shoulders. <laughs> and look at this massive drop. So we're back down at levels that we don't see often, okay? You don't see these, these levels often. In fact, when was the last time we got down this low before June of 2022? Well, it wasn't until like the end of 2019, like where we are now in 2019, August and September of 2019 is the last time we were this low. And the last time we were this low before then was December of 2018. Now we haven't printed a green dot here, okay? But we're getting awfully close. So how much further down can this go? I mean, you know, December 2022, you're talking bear market bottom. Like that's something that doesn't happen very often at all. Um, December 2018, bear market bottom, and then we came back down to it. And that, I mean, that's really it for a long time. Like the last time this happened was November of 2015. So what I'm trying to say is like getting down to this low in the wave trend is a pretty rare event. And so we're either very close to an alt season or we're heading into one. I mean, like we're, we're, I honestly think quarter four, probably at the latest, unless something surprising happens here and we go down even further and somehow take out this low or, or do a double bottom, which is possible. But I mean, with this much, just straight red, I'm thinking that again, I'm ignoring narratives, I'm ignoring narratives, just focusing on charts. Okay. So if you hear me talking different stuff in my snake pay telegram, it's because there, sometimes I focus on narratives. Here in my video, I'm focusing on charts. This looks bullish, super, super bullish. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could probably show you indicator after indicator that looks bullish. One that I haven't looked at on my channel in a while is the average sentiment oscillator. Again, on the weekly, that would be kind of interesting to look at. So, I mean, these are all telling us pretty similar things. I'm having some issues with trading view loading my indicators really slowly right now. Um, apologize. I it will it will appear. There it is. Okay. So the average sentiment oscillator is, and this is going back, you know, quite a few years. This is an indicator that doesn't reach these high levels of red very often, as you can see. You're kind of seeing a similar pattern here across different indicators, where the red is above the green, not often at all. Okay. It's only happened twice before. December of 2022, December of 2015. This is the third highest amount that this oscillator has ever gone in the red. So what does that tell you? Odds are coming for an upside move. That this low that we had a few weeks ago for others dominance may actually be our higher low. I think there's a very good chance of that actually, based on what I'm seeing here. So, um, Let's see if there's anything else. I know that my indicators are loading really slowly. Um, anything else we could look at here that I could think of that might be good for analyzing our altcoin situation? Maybe the stochastic oscillator. Look at our stochastic oscillator. It is down at like some seriously low levels, right? Like these are levels that are not hit often. We did hit them quite a few times. That was that reverse head and shoulders that you saw in the wave trend. Um, you know, really like there's just not a whole lot I can show you that's different, but this has been such a massive downtrend. I think the worst for all coins against Bitcoin is, is almost over. If it's not over already, it's almost over. What are we gonna do? Maybe come down and touch this one more time. Yeah, um, this doesn't mean that we can't go back down. Okay, I wanna be clear about that. If Bitcoin has a massive drop after rate cuts, Let's just say that hypothetically that happens, all coins are going to bleed too. But Bitcoin's days of dominating the market are coming to an end and maybe sooner than we think, maybe sooner than we think. This is, this is just some heavy bottoming that's going on here. 
Okay, it's a bottoming process. There's no doubt about it. Okay. So in conclusion, I feel that altcoins are looking more attractive right now um, than they have in a while. I feel like we've been in an altcoin accumulation season for quite some time. And I think the altcoin accumulation era is coming to an end fairly soon. I can't tell you exactly when, but I don't think it's going to last that much longer. I think there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of apathy, depression in the markets. People are tuned out. Most retail care about all coins. They don't care that much about Bitcoin, but they'll come back into the market when Bitcoin puts in a new high of like 100K or something, you know, or if it's just shooting upwards, which it does tend to do. It tends to just kind of have a way of taking off. So, um, yeah, I, I think like this is not financial advice, but I think it makes sense to have one foot in and one foot out of the market. And with that one foot in, I think it makes sense to have an altcoin position. If you're a more conservative investor, which I am not this cycle, maybe I will be next time around, uh, you know, maybe no more than 10% of your portfolio would be put in altcoins right now. But even if your altcoins are losers, I think it's still good to have an altcoin position. I think waiting to the last minute to convert, waiting for that drop to happen is just being too deterministic and you're likely to get wrecked and face FOMO on the way up. So yeah, you know, I, I'm, on one of my altcoins, I'm down like 80%, okay? It's a horrible feeling. And from a risk management point of view, it's very poor risk management on my part. But I'm holding, I'm not gonna sell. Why would I sell right now? I'm down 80%. The time to sell was a long time ago, okay? I believe in that project and I believe it's gonna do well, I have conviction in it. So, you know, and there's other projects out there that are down substantially as well. And I think this is the time when a lot of people throw in the towel and just give up. I've seen whales do it um, in the, you know, and in the projects I'm interested in. So, you know, I think it just makes sense to have an altcoin position. Now, if you want to take on more risk, go ahead. I also don't think that you need to worry that if you don't buy altcoins today, that they're going to be up like, you know, 300% tomorrow. Just because others' dominance is going up does not mean that altcoin USD pairs are going up. Keep that in mind too. Okay, so this is altcoin accumulation against Bitcoin, meaning that the trend of Bitcoin sort of running this show is coming to an end soon. There's a lot of evidence for that in the charts, and you should probably consider positioning yourself accordingly. Again, not financial advice. You need to do your own research and take what you see in this video into perspective. So. That'll about wrap it up. If you have questions, please drop me a comment below or come over to my snake pit and ask a question there. I'd be happy to answer you. This is Crypto Simulation Theory. I am the Gaussian Snake, and I will see you again next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on your way out. Take care. Bye now.